name's Eric Taylor. I'm an assistant professor of classics at UMass Amherst, and uh, I'm here to just get the show started. It looks like it's going to be a great one, so without further ado, we'll start uh, our session uh, with the first paper. Um, it's by Sam Fee uh, from Washington and Jefferson College, who can't be here today. Um, the paper will be read by Bill Carraher, uh, so Bill, you want to come up now. The paper is, If I Knew Then What I Know Now, Reflections on Custom Mobile App Development. You look to Petra archaeological project, but then we call it the app because it's you know like APT, like appetizer uh, or application. Well, you can't eat cat app, but you can't you know you can't say it in a normal way. Um, so it causes confusion. Um, maybe that's something that if we knew then uh, we would do differently. Uh, the PCAP is a mobile application that facilitates the electronic collection and recording of archaeological field data. Initially implemented during the 2012 season of the Pila Kutopetre Archaeological Project, and this is PCAP, all, all capitals. Um, PCAP, with the lowercase APP, weds archaeological methodology with technological innovation. The app turns traditional paper and pencil data collection into an electronic process, uh, freeing up time for analysis and education. By 2011, uh, HTML5 had become a relatively stable standard. We could write code more easily and reliably with HTML5 than uh, we could have with earlier versions of HTML and JavaScript. Also, we could easily install, test, and operate the software on tablet computers across vast geographic differences. This was particularly important as the developers were in the United States and the archaeologists were in Cyprus. PCAP taught us how to write software for mobile devices while also illuminating numerous possibilities for digital workflow and field research. David Pettigrew, and this gets weird too, uh, David Pettigrew, William Carraher, and I, but I, I'm William Carraher, so it's... Uh, have described the uses of the app in an article in Near Eastern Archaeology uh, previously. Uh, the purpose of the current paper is to describe the technical planning and development behind the app, identify some of the challenging implementation problems, and suggest current directions for app development, given the rapid advance in programming, libraries, and frameworks for custom mobile app development. These tools make it easier and faster to develop a tool like PCAP today than it was back in 2012. PCAP represents a natural progression from traditional paper collection forms replacing two-page document with a single electronic form for recording basic required information and unstructured descriptions. The basic unit of excavation at the Pila Kutopetri Archaeological Project is the stratigraphic unit, or SU, uh, which we use as the unique identifier in the local database. Early in the planning stages, we identified a number of parameters for our development work. Um, there could be no loss of data. Uh, that entry needed to follow a simple process. Data validation was imperative. Software had to run locally on the device uh, and without internet access. Uh, a simple data export mechanism was required. And yeah, I know, I'm reading a PowerPoint slide. It's not really, it's not my paper. Updates <laughs> needed to be accessed, uh, accessible remotely, and our app needed to be platform agnostic. Uh, and must run on any mobile device. We return frequently to this list when planning both design and programming elements, uh, such as the export of data. Several of the, critical, uh, several of the criteria resulted from the needs of researchers working in remote locations with unreliable web access, and they had some technical implications for our work. Uh, we worked from the form validation abilities built into HTML5 to ensure that any data entered was of the right type before it ever got to the primary database. We also ensured that the app could write data directly to the device without wireless access, and that it could shunt data from the device to the primary database. Our desire to access updates remotely meant we developed a web app and kept it away from any app stores for distribution. 
This way we could continue to test and revise while working in the field without delays due to an App Store's approval process. We could also embrace the open source standards of HTML5 and ensure that PCAP could run on any device with, stable and current, with a stable and current, and current red, web browser. Uh, a major advantage of the digital form is that it forces the recorder to enter data in standardized ways. Some fields require the user to choose from selectable menus, and most of the other data can be validated upon entry. HTML5 includes many new, uh, new form building features uh, that we utilize whenever possible. In most data entry locations, the user can only enter, uh, only enter specific types of information that actually fits the way the data is tracked in the database. So for instance, the excavation unit um, numbers are only two, two digits. So an excavation unit is what we call a trench. Um, the user cannot enter any more than that. The same holds true of stratigraph stratigraphic units and elevations in any text area within the form. The app thus generates the data that is formatted in a way that will import directly and correctly into the primary database. PCAP also helps validate the data by bringing in the correct numeric or, alpha or al alphabetic keyboard for specific entry fields, reducing, reducing button clicks and saving time overall. Regular expression attributes of HTML5 made this possible. Most commonly uh, used in the past to evoke pattern matching for searches, regular expressions have been incorporated into HTML5 via the pattern attribute. Built-in web form enhancements in HTML5 allows us to see if, any, if the entry fa falls within valid parameters or not. If it's not, the user must correct the form, uh, to, uh, collect the format of the entry to submit. Um, creating PCAP was especially challenging because we were implementing an innovative but immature tool set, specifically HTML5 on newer versions of mobile browsers. Uh, the app therefore consisted of a highly customized HTML5 along with JMO, uh, jQuery mobile framework that handled a lot of the look and feel of the app. The, customiz the customizations made to the HTML include the addition of, markup, of form markup and the number of attributes to help us validate the data and eliminate a number of potential user errors in the input of data. For the most part, creating this type of app was relatively easy. However, there were three significant problems that needed to be addressed. Uh, there were some features that we wanted but could not provide. We would like the app to have the ability to capture photos and attach them to the exact data record for the SUs we were reporting, uh, and to report GPS coordinates for the areas under observation. We simply could not implement these features in 2012 because the APIs for the internal camera and geolocation had not yet been released. An API is a set of instructions that enables us to write code that hooks into pre-existing programs for, uh, for access hardware controls. Um, the database, our local database consisted of an instance of WebSQL implemented through, uh, through JavaScript. With uh, WebSQL, the actual savings of the data required uh, simply required a basic understanding of SQL. But the difficulties then resided in getting the data out of the local database and either back into the PCAP itself or out into CSV format so it could be added to a third-party database. Uh, and finally, um, exporting the data. Without access to this, uh, file the file system API, we could not simply write files and access them la later. This created hurdles in exporting the data, which we circumvented by sending the data to the screen and then using a separate function to access a remote PHP script and send the data via email. This functionality enabled the users to review the data on the tablet even if they didn't have access to the remote database server. By far the biggest problem of the three was handling the data. To the best of my knowledge, this approach had not been taken before. At least taking data from local storage, placing it into the app, exporting it to an email, and sending it onward. Had connectivity been available, there would have been a much simpler solution to send the data directly uh, to the server-side database. But we were, writing so we were writing software that had to run locally and could not assume connectivity as there is no wireless connectivity at our site. Another option would have been to write the app, app natively in iOS and or Android application, but such an approach, uh, and such an approach would have avoided the data export challenge and would have enabled our implementation of local files. But that would have conflicted with our seventh design parameter, remaining platform agnostic and able to run on any mobile device. In order for us to hold up to our seventh design parameter and also to update the app overnight, uh, our sixth design parameter, uh, a native app could not be implemented without numerous complications. Had we not collectively articulated our shared vision before sitting down to write code, we could have easily gone astray at seven stages, 
several stages and ended up a map that did not address all the issues that we felt were important to the project. Because the technological tool set itself was changing, even as we were developing PCAP, it would have been easy to change direction at several points. But implementing any of the new tools might have brought innovation in one regard at the expense of another, or even the entire project. And such techno technological change has only accelerated since 2012. Today, there are numerous development tools, APIs, JavaScript libraries that did not exist in 2012, or were not um, accessible publicly or realistically implementable for our mobile project at the time. In 2012, we wrote PCAP with a text editor, various browser software, and the jQuery mobile framework. Today, there are many tools available for making processes simpler. Furthermore, many of the technical difficulties we faced in 2012 have, been, have subsequently been addressed through the release of more formalized JavaScript APIs, which now give access to additional hardware and mobile devices. Finally, the maturation of HTML5 has brought about increased stability for local storage of data within the browser, which provides additional um, confidence in data integrity of the contents that we can receive from such an app. With the incorporation of regular expression into the HTML5 specifications, the simple addition of attributes to form elements expanded the functionality of forms significantly. This allowed us to govern the format of data that could be entered into the form. In addition, the development of JavaScript uh, frameworks and libraries in recent years has made more of the development work we undertook in the past much easier today. JavaScript libraries are collections of code available for integration into new programs that typically perform a specific but limited function. JavaScript frameworks, on the other hand, refer to a larger collection of existing library scripts or code that, can, that you can customize to create programs of your own. If we were building data collection forms, to, a data collection form today, I would still employ the jQuery mobile framework that we used for PCAP in 2012. It's particularly well suited for handling web forms and all the components we would want to employ, such as selection menus, toggle switches, text entry areas, and checkboxes. New tools for prototyping or building jQuery mobile apps uh, based apps means you, can, you no longer have to code everything manually, nor do you have to create all the hooks into the framework through a text editor. Now, software now enables anyone with minimal coding experience to at least build the front end of a web app. This places the design of any custom co data collection app firmly within the grasp of the archaeologist and not necessarily the program. The tools come with a number of different approaches and business models. Some are drag and drop, others are WYSIWYG, some are free, and others provided at some considerable cost. I recommend Kodika regularly. It's accessible in both an online version as well as a desktop version. Kodika exports the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that you need to build your app. Uh, once you have the files, creating the front end of the app simply involves modifying and customizing the appearance via HTML attributes or CSS statements. To create a custom field, data collection tool, create a custom field data collection tool, you would need uh, to add in the regular expressions to reinforce data validity, set up a local database, and develop an export feature. Some new JavaScript app, uh, APIs uh, can further enhance the feature set of your app. Since we wrote PCAP, two APIs were released of particular interest to archaeologists, the camera API and the geolocation API. The camera API allows you to take a picture with your device's camera and load it into the current page. Uh, the geolocation API provides the location of the device to the app. These APIs enable the building of, more robust, of a more robust app than we could manage in 2012 with PCAP, uh, though, we, uh, though support uh, for various browsers is mixed. There are two caveats to keep in mind with these APIs. First, the camera API places an image into the app and then saves it to the database assuming your database um, accepts, can accept large files. Image files will be large, so the time required for uploading the data to the primary database will become correspondingly significant, and the overall size of the database uh, uh, will swell. Secondly, the geolocation API defaults to very imprecise settings. Getting the attention of GPS satellites takes some time, so the default setting of the API to specify a location based upon Wi-Fi signal or IP address uh, is based on Wi-Fi signal or IP address instead. Obtaining good coordinates will require some programming work, and this feature will slow the app down. Getting good data for location will also likely require connection to a cellular network. These APIs would have significant would have addressed the first technical difficulties described 
above in section two, incorporating these APIs is likely beyond someone's skill uh, with only the basic skill set in HTML. But a non-programmer with some considerable skills in HTML5 can complete such tasks. HTML5 initially, initially offered three approaches to handling client-side databases, local storage, index DB, and web SQL. Local storage did not always indicate when you've run out of storage, and the real possibility for data loss was not acceptable, giving our vision for the project. That left us with index DB, but that technology was not yet supported by browsers at the time. We literally could not have implemented index DB since no browsers could recognize it. As a result, WebSQL was essentially our only real choice in 2012. Subsequently, WebSQL have been, uh, has been uh, deprecated and is, no, and is not recommended for future development. Otherwise, the choices are largely the same today, but browser support has improved. IndexedDB is now supported in Chrome and iOS 8. Um, it is the recommended approach since you can count on the future browsers implementing this technology. Fortunately, there are even JavaScript libraries that will provide backward F web SQL translations for older browsers. The primary benefit of these changes is that the direction for future development is clear, and you don't have to plan for the obsolescence of your app. Also, more developers are approaching their projects through the use of IndexedDB, uh, and resources and information online can assist with the development of such apps. Nonetheless, the entire database backend of any custom data collection app is fraught with potential technical problems. If we were developing PCAP today, I would suggest proceeding with an index DB approach while also including a JavaScript library to provide backward compatibility with browsers with web SQL support. This would give us this would give the app a much broader reach in terms of its supported devices and would ensure the relevance of the approach to the database for the future of the app. Despite advances in the last few years, data export remains a difficult conundrum for anyone developing a custom app designed to run without connectivity. Apple has not implemented the file system API, which would help address this issue, but there are other approaches that simply require some work. For PCAP, we exported the data and emailed it so that we could provide another check on the data before incorporating it into the primary database. Today, today I might work with the Dropbox API to see if I could find a solution that wrote the data directly to a Dropbox account. If you have reliable connectivity, even occasionally, you can develop an app that simply sends the data to a primary database on a server when connected to the internet. By giving each entry a unique timestamp, you can search the data daily to verify data integrity. This is a very smooth operation, prone to few technological or technical problems as long as the app can eventually acquire reliable connectivity. Both these solutions are more direct than the one we implemented for PCAP in 2012 because an app with reliable connectivity would possess a richer feature set in this regard than an app designed to work exclusively offline. That being said, the email solution that we used for PCAP was easy to implement. We decided on a web app approach for PCAP so that we could update the app at any time and post it online for the team to install in Cypress almost instantaneously. We could fix bugs as they appeared or modify features based on actual field use. As a result, we could address our web design, we could address our design parameters which call for fast, easy updating of the software. We avoided having to write an app for multiple platforms and getting each app and each update approved for delivery through any app store. The web app development process is even easier today. Um, as a, is that the right slide? I probably missed the slide. Oh, there's Sam. Uh, the web app development process is even easier today as a host of new tools exist to facilitate such projects. In addition to a number of JavaScript libraries, frameworks, and APIs, there are, uh, there are a plethora of tools to aid the development of, front end, of the front end of an app built with HTML5. The easy use of presentation in these tools means that the archaeologist can be actively engaged in the software development process, and the process becomes truly participatory. Using tools such as Codica, Technical support is only needed for the development of the database and communication with the primary database, wherever it may reside. In the end, collecting data via PCAP worked, was easy and worked well, matching our design parameters and meeting all of our field uh, work goals. As a result of our experience, we, will see, uh, we see benefits in the incorporation of mobile technologies for collecting data in the field. There are significant improvements in efficiency and overall time saved since uh, entire steps in the process, particularly the manual writing and rewriting uh, our manual writing and re-entering and reviewing of data can be streamlined. Uh, the ability to incorporate data validation into the entry process 
makes this approach an improvement over traditional methods. Uh, this is not to say that such technical efficiencies do not come without a cost. Indeed, any field team should consider the benefits of efficiency as they reflect upon where and when the analysis and interpretations occurs in the archaeological process. But a season of testing provided us with enough observation for our data integrity concerns that we have confidence in the quality of data collected uh, via PCAP. With full implementation of HTML5 specifications, as well as broader implementation of JavaScript APIs, today, um, today we can even more easily produce web apps for field data collection that run without connectivity. Consequently, I believe this process is increasingly accessible to most researchers. <laughs>